Joining me now is Chris Showalter, the CEO of Lifestone Metals. Great to see you in person, sir. Yeah, well, great to be here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we've done this one before, so we're going to uh, uh, remind people of the story, and also you're going to advance it for it as, as well. So you've got the, the flagship pro- project, the uh, uh, Kamanga project, nickel, copper, cobalt in Tanzania. And then uh, you've also got this uh, patented process, Hydromet processing technology, more than 100 patents there. So yep. give us a snapshot of those two. Yeah, so, so as you said, we're kind of a, a hybrid company where we have not only uh, – you know, flagship project in the Kabanga Nickel deposit, um, but also we blend that with being really a technology provider. The way I like to put it is we're, we're utilizing this hydrobed expertise to provide solutions to mining projects to really clean up the supply chain. And I think that's that's really our vision. That's really what we're we're um, engineered to do is is take that dirty step, that smelting step, out of the supply chain, and and it's that on any given project that's sixty to eighty percent of the CO two footprint. So. The mining industry is very serious about following through on some of these carbon reduction targets. Uh, we're one of the solutions they could implement to remove that dirtiest of the dirty process. So, so, yeah, so unlocking new sources of battery metals that also provide a clean processing technology is, uh, is really what we're focused on right now. Right. And so uh, uh, as far as project financing, you've uh, signed on SOCGEN as the, the lead financial advisor. So you've got a letter of intent with the United States International Development Finance Corp. And then you've got a memorandum of understanding with Japan's uh, JOGMEC, and they're both uh, considering loans and, and financial support. Can you can you flesh that out for us? Yeah, yeah. No, this is a series of announcements we made over the, the previous weeks and months, and and really what we're outlining to to investors is this is how the funding structure is essentially coming together. And I think you know with the U.S. government, we have been you know really highlighted as one of these priority projects within the Mineral Security Partnership. Uh, we got a lot of support from the Partnership for Global Infrastructure Initiative and the State Department. Uh, that's one of the you know, the current government's uh, you know, entities to really you know, secure battery supply chain security from a U.S. policy perspective. So I think the way and we've been able to work with the U.S. government right now has been exceptional. And with them to come in and provide political risk insurance, um, that's an instrument that is... Uh, you know, obviously, we're BHP as well. Um, that's that's a nice de-risking component to the to the Kaga project, of course. And then also on the development finance um, commitment to engage on the on the project finance. Uh, that's you know to have the U.S. government come in and anchor a project financing. That's uh, that's also really you know great to have. Wow, and we'll build the syndicate around that kind of anchor participation from them. And the the jog mech announcement, or um, we've been in the market saying that. We are going to be monetizing the offtake agreement. Uh, we are the offtake rights we have. Uh, Lifestyle controls forty percent of those, and so that we didn't put a lot of detail in that announcement, but it's the first indication of directionally where we're we're focused in terms of that that marketing agreement. And I think uh, obviously that would be followed on by some additional announcements something sooner. All right, very good. Now, uh, broadly with nickel, we've talked about this before a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the nickel coming out of Indonesia is known to be dirty. I know that Mark yeah. Selby, the head of uh, Canada Nickel, he calls it blood nickel, basically. Yeah. So can you talk about the, uh, that aspect of the market versus how you're positioning LifeZone as a, as a complete alternative to that? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, th- I think Mark does a really good job articulating and uh, communicating the uh, the sharp disparity you see in the the CO2 implications of the Indonesian uh, nickel mines and, for instance, at Kabaya. Um, you know, Indonesia, I mean, he's right. It's the dirtiest of the dirty. I mean, you're clear-cutting rainforest. You are depositing sedimentation in the, on the ocean floor. These are coal-fired furnaces that are powering this. And, yeah, it's there's there's really no way to clean that up. Um, so the, the CO2 per ton of uh, nickel in Indonesia gets from 40 all the way up to close to 100 in some of these 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 NPI projects, nickel fig iron projects, because they go through multiple smelting steps. Um, so comparing that to Cabango, where we're forecasting to have potentially lower than five tons of CO2 per ton of nickel, that is, you know, I, I don't think I've seen in the mining industry such a difference between the, um, the CO2 implications of about different types of projects around the world. It's uh, that, that has massive impact on, on the auto industry. So... If you're a European auto manufacturer and you are going to be bound by certain policy constraints of CO2 limitations or self-imposed CO2 targeting, um, you really, yeah, they're, they're choking on Indonesian nickel because that just, I mean, Tesla said it best in their annual statement. They said 
close to 34% of the CO2 footprint of a Tesla vehicle is coming from the nickel in the battery, the cathode. I mean, that's a 34%, I mean, that's a big crawl. So we're in an exceptional position as LifeZone um, with the Comag project to be bringing to market really what's gonna be differentiated, clean, nickel, copper, cobalt. And our view is ultimately, you know, we would like to see the market evolve towards a green premium pricing. Um, we feel very strongly that we shouldn't, the, the nickel coming out of Indonesia should not be priced the same as clean nickel coming out of Tanzania. And so um, the market's not there yet, but I think that's, that's a natural evolution that should happen. So Kamang is the flagship, but you also have uh, other projects on the go, such as with Glencore, uh, where they're uh, testing uh, the, the hydromet technology to decarbonize secondary metals. What's the latest there? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's actually getting increasingly um, interesting. We, we're in the piloting program right now. Um, so we basically uh, agreed with Glencore. We're doing all the piloting, and, um, and that's going to take place uh, when we finish that up towards the end of this year, early next year. Um, that's going quite well, and what what that is um, indicating right yeah. now is, you know, we, you know, we I would look to set up kind of a, you know, auto camera recycling facility in the U.S. with Blankor, and what that does is that really the problem with the recycling industry for auto cats is they're just getting recycled and dumped into dirty smelters. So if you're going to recycle something, if you're smelting it, you're just compounding the overall CO2 again and again. again. So, so our argument is, if we're going to do recycling, let's do it correctly, and let's use a clean solution. Um, and that's that's great because we, we can break into a market. Uh, we've got a nice uh, potential competitive advantage because we can process much faster in the current um, supply chain uh, that's in place. And yeah, this is something that we would to replicate with like we on several additional plants. So it's a very scalable opportunity for us, um, and it fits in really well with Glencore's current strategy on the recycling side. So they're very very focused um, on recycling, and this is a, a really nice complementary project to, to bolt into. And lastly, Chris, how would you sum up the competitive position LifeZone has in the investment landscape against, you know, your peers, basically? Yeah, I think um, the competitive positioning, I mean, we, we look for really one of two things. We look for, um, we're going to have a competitive advantage on ore bodies that have deleterious materials, um, that are challenged with some sort of uh, chemical composition that would uh, not be able to go into a smelter. So high chromite, high arsenic, other uh, deleterious materials, um, that's where we have a sweet spot where, um, and that's kind of how we started out in South Africa in the PGM space, uh, really focusing on some of that, that high chromite material that couldn't go into a smelter directly. And so, yeah, so anything chemically complex that we have uh, um, an advantage on the hydromet side, and then the other angle is really going like Cabango, geographically um, challenged, remote, stranded assets, um, where you have to implement a very large logistics infrastructure and build out to get a, a certain my functioning. Um, so by beneficiating locally, uh, we remove that permit. So that Cabango is a great example. Great to see you, Chris. Great. Thank Thanks you. We'll see, see you again. Chris Showalter, CEO of LifeZone Metals.